Hope you're keeping well. Uh, hope you've had a good week so far in the circumstances. Uh, welcome, as always, to the channel. Um, I've not been on for a while. I've been busy doing other things. Um, but I thought, you know what? Let's get back to the channel. It's where we've been busy. Um, I'm just sorting my device out now. Um, there you go. You can see me. I can see your comments. Just give us a thumbs up that you can hear me. Um, and I will read through them. Just give us a thumbs up that you can hear me and then we'll go from there. Um, hope you've all had a good week. I just thought I'd post that as there is some transfers to talk about, some rumours. What is actually happening loud and clear. L.A. Capone, Al Capone, out Brad, hope you're well, mate. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, the first transfer, we'll get straight into it. So, it's only taken 29 days. I think there must be no calendars at Oakwell um, to actually realise that we do need some players. Um, I'll talk about why I think it's happened so late and my opinions on that. As always, give us a like and a subscribe if you're viewing this for the first time. Uh, I am Mark, hope you're well, West Brom fan. Um, hope you're keeping well. If we can have Ishmael back, that would be great. Um, if he's already gone, we can have him back. I am Mark, I am Julian, I am the boy, I am Daniel. Hope you're all well, hope you're all had a good weekend. So yeah, um, we'll talk about the performance yesterday first and foremost. I didn't go. Um, decided to boycott yesterday. Um, I was working acting wise, but also if I, I had the decision if I wanted to go or not, and I was like, I'm, I'm not interested. Um, it's painful at the moment, and I think if we lose on uh, Wednesday, um, that will be it. I had Danny from Lanzarote, you lucky sod. Uh, Brad, feel for you, least dab. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll go into transfers. We'll talk about those. We've been linked with three players over the weekend, and then we'll talk about who we think could be leaving and who's left what I think about Civic leaving. Oh, there is some transfer. What transfers? T Tyke, I'll get into them now. Um so the first one we took we well, it was linked was a midfielder from France called Amin Bassi. Um might be related to Shirley, I don't know. Um twenty four years of age, which is surprising. Um, I was I nearly fell over when I heard that. I am Mark, hope you keep him well. Um, so originally was at Nancy and then is at Metz currently, which are in French Liga, which is the French first division, uh, Moroccan youth international. Um, and he would be linked with a loan to the end of the season, which is a strange one because I feel we do need midfielders. Um, it looks like he's an attacking midfielder from where I've seen. We do need that. But also, in the, at the same time, you could have brought an attacking midfielder back from Oxford at the start of the window that they choose not to do so because they'd rather get the money instead that was offered to them. So, in my opinion, yeah, we need midfielders. Of course, we need midfielders. You know, the, Charlie Winfield's come back and Matty Wolf's come back, and that's good because I think potentially there's something in those players. Aidan Marsh has been included, but let's not get it twisted. You know, we wouldn't have brought those lads back and we wouldn't be playing them as much if we were doing well, would we? Let's be honest. And it's great that they're getting a chance, I'm not saying it's not, but if we were playing well and being successful this season, they would be nowhere near the first team. They'd still be on loan or they'd be in the 23s developing or, you know what I mean by that. So it's because I think last chance alone, let's give young'uns a go. Um, they're all young anyway, but even younger than the usual lot that's been playing. And yeah, we've had injuries and COVID stuff and things like that, but there's no excuses in my opinion. We need we need a new 18 LA Capone, in my opinion, from top to bottom. Um, so I mean Bassey, we'll get into tomorrow's. We'll get we'll get from yesterday. We'll get into yesterday um, in a little bit. I'm just going to talk about um, I mean Bassey. I'll get through all your comments because they're all coming up. So in theory, he might be a good player. He looks good on YouTube, but so did Christoph Nash Molner. Um, you know what I mean by that. So anybody can make YouTube clips and make players look fantastic. Obi Alari looked fantastic and he's played 25 minutes this season and he's been looked to have been shipped out of the club already this winter on loan because he's been a naughty boy. Um, that's all I'll say on that matter. So that transfer worked fantastic. So Bassi, by the time he settles, it'll be the end of the season and then he'll be going back to France. It says it all that he's not even been considered by any other teams in France because he's not getting first team games there. So he is probably an easy player to get and 
how do you spell this guy's name? Uh, it's A M I N E, and then surname is B A S S I. So he's not related to Shirley Al Capone. Um, so, listen, we need a, a player in that area. I've, I've said that we needed that from the summer, but I also go back to the Irby Kane situation. It all ties in together. This is why I always talk about it. It all ties in together because we could have got an attacking midfielder that we currently own, Irby Kane. We saw that we needed a change of style of play. That's what they stated at the start of the season. So that's the reason why they got shopping because apparently he was a technical gifted manager. And I thought, you know, one of the beneficiaries of that would be Irby Kane. But what we decided to do is was loan him out. I mean, I understood that as well. But I thought, well, if we're going to be doing that, then we're going to be bringing players in that's going to play every week. And we got a load of young uns into a club that's never really played first team football anywhere else. Benson from Grinsby last season on loan. That was his only first team experience, really. And in essence, it were a good signing, but we were never there to replace Alex Mower. He needed somebody with him. You need somebody with you. Why does every other club in the championship have a young lad and an older lad next to him except us? Every other club can see at this level you need some older lads there. That's why it worked last season, one of the reasons, because we had Mowat with Palmer, experienced player with a young lad coming through. We had Sol Bauer with Civic, experienced lad with a young lad coming through. Well, I, I think he were good enough, Dale. That, that's my opinion. I don't I, I don't know if you know we, we disagree on that matter. I think the style of play didn't suit him whatsoever. Um, under Ishmael last season, he was one of the you know people that really didn't suffer, suffered with that. And also I think Connor Chaplin. Um, but I feel that under a more technical coach this season he would have thrived. There's no reason why he did, he, you know, he would have. Um, he, there's no reason why he got Player of the Month in November for Oxford. He was playing every week. He's been linked to other Championship sides. Um, I felt he just needed a bit of confidence. So all he needed was a bit of confidence and an arm around the shoulder, which is why I go back to a man manager, which is why what we need at the start of the season. So this Bassey, you know, bring him in. But will it change all the problems? No, it's just for me. Just, um, just, you know, trying to, I don't know. By the time he starts getting settled, there'll be time to go back to France and then we're having to look for another play in the summer again and if if Oxford get promoted, um, that's, you know, he'll probably go permanent with them because they'll make another offer which will accept if, if these owners are still here at the time um, because they want the money and they've made that clear with the Civic cell. I, I don't, uh, you know, let's go to the Civic cell, which early in the week um, happened. He went to Hearts and I don't blame him. Do not blame him because why would you play, why would you sit on the bench and watch Jasper Moon and Liam Kitchen? We've all respected them as people. The way that they've been playing this season and Civic's looking, thinking, they're not even playing great and I'm still not in the side. And that quote, like somebody just mentioned there from Khalid, the chief exec, was absolutely ridiculous. You know, I want to know what prescription drugs he's on because I want some to live in that world of, you know, different from reality because I, I, I can't cope with, with the comments that I see from him. It's like, just don't talk. Just do not talk because whatever it seems to me whatever he says um, just doesn't make sense. I mean, what competition is there in defence? And then what we do is then we make we'll on them out that we're signed as a centre midfielder and then we transfer him into a centre midfielder. It's like you're not even playing him at centre midfield. So how are you transferring him into a centre back? Buy him what you bring him into the club for and play him there. I don't get this. We're making him a coaching into another player. Well, you're not doing great with the players that you know. I don't. I don't get it. And Sibit, you know, listen. I wasn't a massive fan of him, but under Ishmael he thrived because he knew what he knew the system and the the more simpler it was for him, in my opinion. Because he used to man marking a lot of games, Sibic did, and he used to be very good at that. And under Sol Bauer, he flourished because he had an older lad with him. They used to guide him through games. That used to talk to him. If he had an older lad with him, Sibic, he would have done okay this season, in my opinion. And fair play to going to Hearts because he had a good loan spell there. A lot of their fans were gutted about him going. And they've just the the you know the the rational perspective of it would be, well, he's not going to be playing under Ash Baggy because that's clear. So may as well take the money for him. But the way it's been done. The fact that he had to come out first in, on social media and say goodbye before the club did just spoke about everything about you know the way that he were treated last six months or so. You know I don't know the ins and outs of why we dropped from the team. Some say it's disciplinary. We're not you know we don't know the finer details of that, but just to the way that he were treated at the end, you know, not even on the bench, were just uh, in my opinion not good. So that's my opinion on the civic matter. Um, so the second player we've been linked with today is uh, Luke Bolton at Manchester City. Now, he's 22. He's had some league experience with Luton, uh, also with Wickham on loan. 
and he's played up in Scotland on loan with Dundee United. So, again, in theory, this would be a decent signing. Well, we know, Paul, that manager's not picking team. Conway's even admitted that. We'll, we'll get into some of those comments in a bit. I'm like, well, it just, it, it just clarifies a lot of things to me, but it infuriates me even more that it actually is taking place. Um, and if he's doing it at one club, he's doing it at another, let me tell you that, because he's a control freak. And I'll, I'll, I'll admit that, and I'll say that on, on camera and on record, because, you know, that that's my opinion on it. Because, well, it is. Um, Luke Bolton, that's what we're on about. So he's in the final six months of his contract to Man City. Let's be fair, you know, he's not going to be getting into their first team anytime soon. You know, he's one of those lads that needs to play regular, similar to where he became when he came through the system at Liverpool. You know, come through the youth system. And, you know, City do play the young lads, obviously, they've brought Foden through for the last few years. De Lapp, Cole Palmer. So they've brought some good young prospects through, but obviously Bolton's the, the one that's not made the grade. However, he's probably good enough for the Championship, which is why he had loan. At Wickham, I think, were well, last season or the season before. He has. Gabriel has been a naughty boy. I'm not going to reveal what, but um, just he's not. It's not. It's not good. It wouldn't look good on the club if it came out. That's why they're trying to loan him out to Holland. Let me just. Say, I'll just say that. Um, I probably. I probably. If it, if it came out in the in the thing, and then you're like, that's the reason he's not said it. But yeah, he's not. He's not been up to good. Um, so going to Luke Bolton I th again I think in theory it would be a good signing but what does he need with him an experienced midfielder it all goes back to the same thing because listen he's a good lad I, you know I've seen a few clips of him and I've seen Bolton play and he's technically a good player but is he for next season you know you know is he for next season um, it won't cost much because he's in final six months of his contract City will try and get some profit is there that link with Khalid being from Man City and all that crap? I don't know, but um, again, at the start of the season, could he have been a good signing? Maybe yeah. But I always go back to the same thing: we need lads who are twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Not you know, that's you know, you look at all other teams in this league that's doing quite well. It's because they've got an older lad with a younger lad. You need to mix it, as Steve said in the, in his video, very good video. If you've not watched it, check it out. It's all right. These young lads, being in my opinion. Even Moon, Moon and Kitchen, they've been thrown in the deep end. You need an older lad, William, in influencing dressing. Look at Matty James, I keep talking about this till I'm blue in the face. The reason that Palmer and Mowat prospered in the first half of the season, especially Palmer, because he had James with him. That influence in dressing room, an older lad, you know, to talk through game with them. And it's not even in, in the game, it's on the dressing in the dressing room, on, on the training pitch each week. They need older lads around them. Carl, Carl and Morris at the start of this transfer window are more or less begging for players to come in and that's not happened yet so you start, you get to January in the position that we were in and the manager said it in, in the papers we need somebody sooner rather than later it's only taken 29 days for us to actually start to seriously get in link with players and for me that's a disgrace you know from October, November onwards they should have been looking at players they said listen it's been a disastrous start to the season let's look at players that we realistically can bring in and what an indictment to this current manager there's obviously, you know, they brought him in to make a change. That's the reason, you know, you'd assume so. And I never thought the manager was good enough, I hoped. And I got on the bandwagon to start. We thought, yeah, he's done all right with Sweden under-21s. But afterwards, you look at his league record and it's not been great. You know, and this is what it goes back to, is we just replaced somebody else with a Swedish shop. You know, he's just a Swedish shop, in my opinion. He's not changed anything. We're still losing games. We still look leaderless. And, I, you know, I feel for him. His first transfer window, you know, he'd have come into the club on the assumption he would have been backed in some sense. But he's not been backed at all. Um, and people say, well, he has been backed. Well, 29 days at window, we're not brought one player in yet. And at the start of the window, he actually asked for players. Morris, one of the players, asked for some fresh faces in dressing room. It's not very, or you know, inspiring for, for lads that are clearly struggling. They need some help and they don't get any. And the final one is 19-year-old Tyrese Simpson. Now, this lad is currently on loan at Swindon. He's got 11 goals this season in League Two uh, in 31 appearances, which is quite decent for a 19-year-old. Um, again, I'm thinking sell-on value is the, is the reason behind this in the future. Being linked with Cardiff and Hull City also. So listen, I think Swindon wants to sign him permanently too. So there is a player there, clearly, because he's scoring goals at a young age. So you're thinking... Again, we we saw Ashley Fletcher a few years ago coming in and look at career, you know, is it a decent career? Um, I would say for a championship player on and off, but I think, you know, he's still had a decent career. You look at Ivan Tony came in. So, you know, we've seen a few loans like these before. 
But is the answer to keep you in the championship? No, I think it's clearly for one word, money, uh, for sell on sell on value. Um, and we need forwards, but we need lads that are proven at this level, and we're, we're not going to get that, I'm afraid. So I think, that, yeah, Jay Fulton, but I, I think he started to play more, Dale, because they've had injury issues and he's done okay. So I think, the, I think the, they're more or less keeping him now. So we were linked with Jay Fulton, uh, like a box to box midfielder. Um, that played under Steve Cooper is not really played under Russell Martin this season at Swansea so I think they're keeping him now because they've had a few injuries like I said so they're the three that's from this weekend yeah gave, sell on fee all the time that's the reason Moon's in in case he ever came good they say he's from the academy we've brought him through we've raised him and but what they're doing is even Moon's admitted it himself is is, is the hardest season of his career even though it's a very short one because they threw him to the Sharks he's had no chance no chance and it's you know the thing I don't agree with with the with the coaches is this is play they played poor every week all these players and yet they're playing every week they're making simple errors every week and people like who else would come in? But there's players that's not even be given a chance. You look at Remy Vita's only been re recently introduced. You got Ondermark. You you've got a lot of players there that can. I miss you too, mate. <laughs> We've got a lot of players that can come in and make a difference. You know, two or three, four players just freshen it up. I'd, listen, I'd rather have these young'uns in the season. Marsh and Wolf now, because I know that they care. They're from town. Just, just get him in. Um, Vita looks a talent. How has he not played? How has he not played? He's not come through the youth system at Bayern Munich. I would play Marsh and Wolf, Ryan, because they care. You know, there's some players that are in final months of their contract, e.g. Ramal Palmer. Is he going to be getting everything every week if he knows that we're going down? you got Wolf there. He's just been at Ashbier, playing every week in Denmark. He might not be a great standard, but he's been playing first-team football, so he's fresh. Um. But listen, Ash Barge, in my opinion, I know he's been ill, but if it's mathematically impossible to stay up in, in a few months' time, get rid of him and just get somebody in for next season. Let's stop waiting around. I hope, again, things change so we can actually get a better calibre of coach by then. Um, but that's different. But, if you know, we, we, we are down, mate. We were down in summer when they didn't, we, they didn't back the manager and they, they could have looked at it. And listen, this is the thing I'll go back to. I actually agreed with a lot of stuff that they did last season. Retained players. We retained players in, in January and the summer from last season. We were recruited well. We got to fifth in the league. I'm like, you know what? Fair play to them. They're starting to turn a corner. And I was hopeful that they were. We lost Ishmael. I'm like, well, you know what? They've got release clause, which I don't don't appreciate. but And I don't agree with because I think it... Um, I would. I would take Paul Cook. I'd have taken Eki back, but that, you know, <laughs> but there we are. And never let him go in first place. I'd have backed him when he needed to be backed. Um, but they didn't. They went back to what they knew. It was kind of like, well, we've gone if, gone for Ishmael. I'm like, just go a bit sensible for a year. You've had a lot of changes behind the scenes. Just go sensible. One season, it's all I'm asking of you. Just bring somebody that's got a track record. Don't go for another left field option because it might go disastrously wrong. And then, you know, they brought in players that are not, not good enough. None of them, even Leia Reseca, started to doubt him now. And I thought he looked good to start with, but... When you when the team's poor, you're gonna look poor too. So let's go through your comments, um, guys, because you know it would be unfair of me to uh, not go through them all. I go from the top. Um, the boy, oh, evening, Luke. Think you was deserved something from yesterday. We played poor. If you was could take your chances, we could have got beat yesterday. That's the thing, though. Even though you're not in great form, guys, uh, Bournemouth are not in great form. You just do enough to win a game, and that we yesterday got an early goal. Um, our lads' confidence had dropped, and then it was only really till the second half that we, you know, we had a chance to end it first. I've watched a few highlights. You know, I, I'm not going to comment on everything because I weren't fully there, but it's it's just a typical typical case of when a team's down there. Usually, you would probably put up a better performance, a more realistic chance of goals. But because our confidence is shot, we were ever realistically going to score yesterday. And like I said, that early goal, you know, the assistant Sabila, Ferran Sabila, blamed the wind for for that goal. Um, that's what excuses we're getting to now. Um, not not the players just not being good enough, and you were not setting them up correctly in the training sessions. But yeah, the wind was apparently the issue. But I think it's a case of you just having better quality players. And I think, like we said, if we had better quality players, we had more experience. You know, there's been there's been we've not lost we've not we've not been hammered in many games this season. It's just us making individual errors. And if that happens every game of every week, what you know, there's a reason why we're down there. Because we're not learning from his mistakes. And that goes back down to one thing, experience again. We're not looking ourselves in the mirror. There's nobody talking in dressing room, in my opinion, that'll be saying something. That They'll be saying, we need to improve this, uh, you know, this, this and this. 
and um, so it's Bargy whenever they answer. It all goes back down to my, my management as well. Uh, El Capo, and I think I mentioned this, we need new players, we do need new players all over the pitch, mate, we do. Um, we never, you know, the, the left-back situation, why did we not start Vita from the start of the season and at least give styles like uh, Matt said there? If, you, if you're not going to bring Kane back, at least make him a playmaker, styles and get him further forward. Um, and start V to the start of the season and I'd, I'd have brought in a free agent somebody like a Joe Bennett that went to Blackburn and he's you know, done a decent job there but you know, I'm not the recruitment guy I wish I were because I think you know, I think we'd, we'd stand a better chance of somebody that actually f didn't think of age as an issue and thought well you know what we're going to look at what they've done at this level because um, look at Solbauer look at the difference he made to us over 18 months and then they don't, I, this is what gets me it's like they could clearly see the difference that the likes of Solbauer and James made on the team you know, it made us more successful. So surely you want your club to be successful. You don't want to be struggling all the time. Um, cheers, Danny. Keep up the great, great work, mate. We have a Kalima here. A big, thick Moroccan clouds. Do you think it's this player? For it could be, mate. It, <laughs> I mean, it, again, it's difficult. One of the reasons why we've not, why we've not, um, why we've, why we've struggled this season and also in the transfer is because we've got a month, which is always hard notoriously. Not many players are going to want to come to us because we're already well. We're probably down already. So why would you want to then go to a championship side that you know is getting relegated? So you know that automatically wages are going to get dropped. And it could be another manager at the start of next season or even this season that might not rate you or want you. And so they might not play you. E.g. Sibic started the season with shop. Has bargain didn't rate him or the club didn't want him to play due to whatever happened behind the scenes. And so he gets he get he goes. Uh, and also it's going to be hard to bring a player who's informed to the club, which is what you need, because you want players to hit the ground and need to make a difference. Last season, we were able to do that because we're in a good position, so we could attract the likes of Morris and DK and keep you better players at the same time. Um, um, I sort of think I had a bit of connection issue, sorry there. So that, that so that's um, that's the reason why we struggle to bring players in. Plus, as well, like, they don't want to spend the money. They've stated that, Conway stated that in an interview a few weeks back. He's admitted that the fans know that they're not wanting to spend money and they won't. They won't spend any of their own money unless they sell a player for a big fee. Khalid's apparently stated that we've turned fees down for players, which, you know, we might have done. Um, but that's a good thing. I don't know why it's a bad thing. We want to keep the players that are currently here, your better players. You want to keep Alec here, you want to keep Anderson here. I won't blame if they went, because why would you want to stay here when the club's got no standards? You know, you'd want to play at the best level that you can whilst you can. But we, sh we shouldn't be like thinking that's a bad thing that we're keeping players like from summer I, I couldn't believe you know we've, we spoke about this many times but it's just like sometimes very baffling what you hear I shake, I shake my head so much Cardiff beat Forest didn't help you but helped us but saying that lucky Reading are awful well I think there'll be some clubs that'll stay up or that, that might come down with us but th this year ain't great I don't think in the championship either which frustrates me even more there's not that many sides that I've seen this season that blow me away Um I thought Coventry were the best side I've seen this season. And we beat them. How ah, strange is that? But, you know, good luck to you all at first of the season, Brad. I think, you know, it could be three or four next week in the Cup. Be a bit of a piss up for, for people that go. But, you know, it's just, I'd rather win it. I'd rather lose that game and get three points in the league. Aya Sam, hope you're well. Um, Mark, I support Barnsley. Luke, I support Barnsley, but they keep struggling since Alex Mowat left the team. And exactly, we go up. January, we knew his contract were running out in the summer, Mowat. Did we not realistically look at a plan B and think, well, Mowat could be leaving? And the only reason that he will be staying is if we get promoted. That realistically was the only reason. Because if he would have stayed, if he wanted to stay, he would have signed a contract before the end of the season. It dragged on and it dragged on. And we should have looked and realised, you know what? We should have brought Matty James in to be a ready-made captain for when he leaves. You know, James obviously has gone to Bristol City. Still couldn't do it at this level, or Bristol wouldn't have signed him. You know, he just needed a regular run of games due to his injury record. You know, that would have been a no-brainer. He knows the club. He can just fit in. You know, can bring the younger lads through whilst he's here. But we didn't. We, we, we just seemed to... We, we let him. We let Mowat go and then we're like, well, what do we do now? And, uh, he, you know, really, we, we I think we only really appreciated Mowat's performances now he's left, you know. Uh, Danny Reynolds, hope you can hope you're well, pal. Hope you're well too, mate. Still can't get my head round Khalid. Say we have healthy competition at centre back when we're clearly done leaking goals. I know. I, yeah, I think I spoke about that earlier about the civic situation. It was very strange. And Neil, he got man of the match yesterday for arts. There you go. Inspired, wanting to make a difference, happy. You know, he's clearly got the movie we're after because he weren't happy here. Um, 
and wanted to prove a point, and I hope he does well at Arts. Usually players that leave us do, usually do well when they're being treated like shit here. Malik Wilkes, he helped get little promoted last season, didn't he? So, there we go. Um, Gabriel, yeah, with the Josh Benson thing, I thought, again, you know, he's come through Burnley, where obviously we're a premiership side when he was coming through the system. He must be a decent player to come through that system, but he's clearly not going to get in their first team. It goes back to the same thing, experience. It, it, they needed lads with him and they didn't get that. Um, hi, Luke. How things, mate, from Celtic fan? Hi, Anthony. Hope you're well. Take care. I'm very scared for Wednesday against Sevco. Don't know who you meant by that, but if you can elaborate, I'll get back to you. Hiya, John. Birmingham fan. Um, Cardiff win is huge down the bottom, very much a dagger to the bottom three. You think Woodrow is generally injured or will Kit leave tomorrow? Or, or, I don't know, I'm not going to say him. I think he could be injured um, at the start of the start of the month I thought they were dragging that injury out a bit but then obviously it's been a, a, a legitimate issue as an operation so I think if he were fit um, John I think he would have left by now um, that's my opinion um, or he would have looked to have left because he doesn't look happy whenever he does play um, Paul Lewis picking the team <laughs> there's a guy that certainly alluded to that in the press um, and he starts. his name starts with a P um, the boy or Mark what's your opinion on Ishmael I think that was the same for Mark in the comments um, Mason Greenwood will be available on a free soon how about signing him I, I think he'll be in jail soon Carlos um, with what he's done not good at all that uh, the boy or alright mate Luke hope you're well I've got bad eyesight hope you're, you deserve something out of that yesterday I think I've already commented on that from early I think you've just put it in so I can see it Glenn last season was a complete failure for the ownership profit player sales. Oxford paid for Kane, Loan, Sibic, undisclosed probably two hundred grand. And yeah, look, listen, it makes me it makes me laugh that they're always on about how much money they want to make. Like they don't make much money at the sales anyway. I always thought, well, if they're going to sell a player, we would do what Brentford would do, which would be you would sell a player for the biggest fee possible, and then you'd reinvest it. Which is why Brentford have done well because they spend money because they know that they're going to get money back. Hence, why they'll spend five million and they'll know, they'll know they'll make fifteen. You know, the Ollie Watkins, I think, he went for thirty million. I don't know how much they bought him for, but they're like, if you want to buy him, which is obviously you're going to sell a player for more when you're playing well. But when we were doing well, or this, they say that they want to make money, you would then sell them for better because then you'd have a player ready to come in. And surely that, if you want your business to be a success, is about making money but also doing it properly when I thought we could have done what Brentford have done because it is very doable and look where they are now um, but they, they wanted to do the same as Brentford but by spending nothing at all or not in terms of in terms of real business real money nothing at all so that's why the net spend's been so low um, I'm just going to go back up because I went down to the bottom um, Uh, wait a minute, guys. Uh, it's... Jay Fulton is too good for us, in my opinion, regardless from what I've seen. No, he'd come here. I think he played against us in the two uh, playoff games last season. I can remember. And he, he does look a good little player, you know. Again, could, could be, would have been a good signing, but, you know, did we show the real effort to try and get him? I think if you want... If you want to get a player, you make you, know, you you make your opinions known immediately. I mean, the Lyndon Dyke situation, we could have got him for 1.8 from QPR. Uh, no, 1.2 or 1 million from uh, we're at Livingston. And then QPR came in, bid 200 grand extra. And look, you know, it, I think it'd be about a £5 million striker now in the Championship with the job he's done at QPR. So again, another one that we're missing. We do that all the time. Just, you know, we did that back in the crying days. We're just summing an iron over 100 grand here, and I'm like, if you want him, just put him in. The money that you're going to get back from him if they're a success. Uh, Gabriel, we're down anyway now, in my opinion, but even so, we might as well at least go down playing players that give a shit and give it some grit and determination. Exactly. And, you know, will it make them better characters in the long run? Maybe, yeah. Do we come back from it in the end and get a good nucleus of local lads that we can come and bring through? And, you know, hopefully we can attract a calibre of player that for next season we could come back up. He'll be even harder next season. I think he'll he'll leave in the summer, mate, Joe. If we go down, I think Woodrow's gone. That's my opinion. I think he'd still have 12 months left, wouldn't he? So I think they'd, they'd, they'd sell him in the summer. He'd, he'd go back to a team like a Millwall or something like that. Glyn Roberts, Shawby, another coach from Europe. I wanted Ryan Lowe from Plymouth Work Miracles at Berry, and he's done an amazing job at Preston. And I called Ryan Lowe even when he were at Plymouth. I said it so many times on here. Ryan Lowe, very good young manager. 
especially what we need, you could build something around him. It goes back to the same thing that I keep talking about is ambition and standards. Would you want to build an ambition, you know, would you want to build something around that lad over three years? Yes. And how can a club succeed long term if they've got no ambition for either 12 months? We've got no vision for 12 months. I don't know where this club's going in 12 months' time. I don't even think the board do. I think they just go from week to week. And, you know, that thing about being at Premier League in five years is obviously way out the window. And, you know, that's how clubs who are at the top succeed is because they know where they want to be. If you don't know where you want to be, you expect to stagnate and fail. And that's what we've done. And this project's failed. Every other championship team does not employ this same, you know, business of doing stuff. And people say, well, look at Derby and Reading and all those teams and Sheffield Wednesday last season that suffered financially. Yeah, but also look at Luton and Blackpool and Preston and Blackburn. They've not spent loads. It's been clever, but brought players in, you know, that can do it a little bit there. I mean... At Blackburn signing Ryan Edges, who used to play for us for 200 grand, who was obviously done really well in Scotland. You know, those types of players that can come in and, you know, do well. You know, I think that's the way that we could have gone, is look, looked at what we're working and, and done that there. But Ryan Lowe, I completely agree with you. Um, and it's Preston's gain and our loss again, but we wouldn't have even approached England, so there's no point even talking about it, because we wouldn't have approached them. Anybody with a rational mind would be like, you know what, I think he'd have come here. You know, if he'd have kept us up, it'd have been a massive thing for him, but also then built his own team from next season. Um, hiya, Sean. Hope you're keeping well. Um, Mark, for me, the manager's personality is the most important thing. Shop and Poyer are so laid back and nice, where Ishmael had a presence. And I also think at the same time, I think as Bargy currently knows, there is not being backed and also there it's curtains that were, were down. I think deep down, why would you... You know, there's, ne there's inevitability that when you know that you're going down, I think they've all down tools. The players and the in the interviews look fed up you know as Bargy looks fed up you know there were a comment made by Rob Staten at Radio Sheffield what could you say to the fans that are currently dis obviously not happy with what's going on and he didn't know what to say he, he said it, his, his face told the story what can he say because he's, he's not happy either he probably realised the task that he's got same with the chief exec probably doesn't realise what he walked into the day that he walked in cushioned number in championship earning 75 grand a year or something like that then I'll fuck off to another team like Murphy did, you know, and use as a stepping stone. But, it, oh God, he didn't know where he walked into. But, again, you know, I, I know what you mean, though. You need somebody that you can get behind. And the players will be looking at Shop and Poyer this season and be like, how can we play for you when you've got, like, you know, are they going to be like Ishmael that gave players a rocky to ass at half-time? I mean, last year under Ishmael, if we play poor first half, you know, they'd come out second half and get everything. And a lot of time they did, didn't they? We turned games around a lot at second half due to that. Um, Craig, I hope, hope you well, pal. Current free agents, I think, could add something to our team. Josh Sims, very good, good, um, good shout. Andre Wisdom, good shout. Wilshire said this at the start of the season. Why we're not meaning club captain? Experienced, is still relatively young. Well, for, for well, he's same age as me, and uh, apparently I'd be old. If, <laughs> I mean, I'm a free agent. Uh, Dan Crowley, good player. Liked him when he was with us. We're at Birmingham. Defoe, I think he'd be a bit too old, but I think he'd still score goals at this level, I think. Look at Billy Sharp, what a job he's doing at Sheffield still. Lee Tomlin. Um, Mark Snodgrass, as much as I want Barnsley to win, only a miracle will make it happen. Exactly. I can't see where next win's coming from, mate, at the minute. I think it's going to be a case of uh, um, them playing very, very poor in a set piece. So, yeah, I can't see it next win at all. I cannot. I think, you know, that's really sad as well to admit that. The club clearly don't rate Kane, it says Maxwell. I, I think they don't rate Connor. I, this is what I mean. I, I don't really view, in my opinion, I don't really take what the club view as, as serious because you look at Connor Chaplin, you're not telling me he's worse than players that we currently got up front. You, you, you know, especially lads that are on fringes. You know, Cole, done, not done anything, has he really? Had a behaviour. Again, I don't know why we're still persisting with this system. It's not worked all season, so why are we still doing it? Um, we should have looked in from the first month and realised this is not working. These players are not good enough to play that or they don't understand it. We still keep persisting with it. But really, I don't really listen to what whether the board don't, don't think they're good enough or not because they, they don't know they know not about football. They've never played a game. We've got nobody on board or in behind the scenes that's played the game. You know what I mean? So in terms of recruitment and who sells and who goes, you know, and the manager's got no say if they leave or not. It's completely not up to him at all. Um, I agree with you, Max. I mean, I like Josh Windass, but it'll be too much. Um, I liked him when he were at Accrington. I liked him when he were at Rangers. 
Um, Bailey, I hope you're well, mate. Bournemouth fans were helping us protest against the board. I know I saw them videos. That were nice to them. Um, and I think because they, they, I think because um, they had a good ownership, they've got good owners that do generally invest. I, I think historically, Bournemouth are not a bigger club than us. If you look back 15, 20 years, they used to be in Division 3. It's only when they've had a new owner come in, Russian guy that's invested money, that they've got to where they are and they're not complaining either. And if they do sell players, they're selling for a big fee. And they've got probably similar fan base to us, maybe even less. I went to that game in September and there were about 9,000 there for a team that's just come down from Premier League. So if that were us, we'd have been, you know, if we'd have gone down, do you know what I mean by that? It'd still be, it'd have been 15, 16 in Championship. Even when we went down from uh, the Premier League back in 98, we still had 17,000 a week for first year. And even under even under Dave Bassett, we had 16, 17 a week. Easy, we, we are to wear fans. Good old days, eh? Um. Gabriel, my main gripe with Mowat was always his poor set piece deliveries. Yeah, I I think I think that's something that he needed to work from. But you know what, mate? If that's the only thing that we're poor, that you know, apart from that, that's the only thing. I think every player has some uh, poor attributes to the game. Um. Jed, don't you think we're getting in yes men as manager now? Team selection, suspect Conway was scared of Ishmael. Goalkeeper still not as good as Davis. I think Collins is a very good player and I think he will go in the summer as well. I think he's improved a lot. He improved a lot under Kev Pilkington, which we let go, the keeper coach, um, which again I think were a mistake. That might have been his decision, but I, I still think that he brought him and Walton on in, in his respective areas. I think we got a lot more comfortable. I was very scared of, of Collins to start with and... Uh, Radlinger and Pilkington came in and made him a lot more assured. But I do think we are yes men that are coming in 100% because they've got no influence in the transfers. Conway's made that clear. They've got probably how much say have they got in the in the team selection. You've got to question that now with the comments that he's made. And if you want to if you want to find out where they are, they'll be easily viewed on the internet because he did an interview recently where he was alluding to the job that they've done in France. But yet... <laughs> The, the 23rd in the league and he was commenting I don't know when that quote were but uh, he just spoke volumes um, about a lot and um, didn't really assure me just brought a lot of clarity that what I've been saying for three and a half years is correct that I don't believe that they've got the best interest of the club at heart and as long as they're here anybody that does speak up either gets kicked out of the football club or gets punished or berated as a troublemaker um, that speaks out of line Ishmael did have a personality he did say what he felt I don't think he'd have put up with this season, would he? I think he would have been expected to get backed. And why wouldn't they have backed him? He finished fifth last season and he wasn't even his first full season. And I thought, you know what, we could have used this season as a springboard to push on and really change the mentality of the football club for the next three or four years. And thought, you know what, let's back him again. He's got us to fifth, let's put something behind him. You know, let's reward him. And he, he might have stayed. But clearly, he's thought, well, you know what, I'm not going to get back this year. And that's why he took the West Brom job. In my opinion, I think if we'd have showed some ambition and standards and, and tried to really use what had happened last season as a springboard to push us on, that's the that's the thing that sealed the you know sealed the coffin for me. I thought, well, if if they do that in the summer, the back Ishmael, and even if my work goes, but they bring a like for liking and they invest a little bit of money, and we try and push on for top ten like we did last year, which were perfectly doable if we'd have kept more or less the same team and the same, you know, just added three or four players here and just strengthened the bench a bit, could have been top ten easy. But we just ex just gone back to what we know. No investment really. Only transfer were Ishmael for two million. And we did bring a like for like in, even with manager, and that's where it went wrong for me. And that's where like, yeah, they're not bothered. I mean, I think they resigned to League One already. Um and it saddens me. We should have better standards than we do. Um Can't say that, Dale, you'll get You'll get to slandered here, there, and everywhere on certain forums. Um, I, Stephen, hope you well. Very easy, mate. You know, League One is not an easy league. If people think we're going to be in contention just because we've got a right to do so, for me, every year we should be in the Championship. That's the prerequisite. That's the standards that I want for our football club. That you know, and, and any any anything below is not good enough. I'm a winner. I don't expect to be twenty third and be shouting, you know, being proud about that. I expect us to be top ten, challenging. Even if we're struggling, I want us to play and have an identity and want to win a game of football. 
and have players that want to play for the football club and have a manager that knows what he's doing and have a board and a recruitment staff that, that are in line with the manager but also give the manager some influence on signings. You look at in League One, Sunderland, Oxford, Sheffield Wednesday, Lincoln, Ipswich, Portsmouth, Bolton, Wigan, to name a few sides. Charlton next season will be stronger. There's a lot of decent sides at League One plus the two teams that's coming down with us. And they'll 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 be favourites as well next season. You've even got likes of Fleetwood that's getting better and Wickham, Rotherham. There's a lot of good sides at that level. The League One is getting stronger. They're bridging the gap slowly but surely. So let's not all get past it that we if we get if we you know if we get down this season we're going to come back up straight away. We saw what happened last side last time under Danny Wilson. We took us three two or three years to come back. It weren't immediate. You know what I mean. So we've got to be careful. We you know let's just not disregard all those teams in League One straight away. It's a tough league to get out of. We're going to have to change the style of play again because it's a very traditional league. It's a lot more physical. You're going to have to bring players in that are suited to that. Sprinkle with a bit of quality. you know, And then we're going to lose players all over again. You're looking at likes like Elliot going, Anderson, Carlton, Morris, Woodrow, Collins. You could have six or seven players that are leaving Britain. You, you know, you're know, you going to have players that are leaving left, right and centre in the summer. It's going to be a complete rebuild over all over again with a new coach. You know... You know, backroom staff going to, you know, it could be a complete overhaul again. So, you know, I completely agree with you there. I, I, I hope, obviously, that's not the case, but we, we could definitely struggle again. We could definitely struggle again. Um, Hex Music. Hi, mate. When we drew 2 2 at QPR early in the season, we all knew we needed to strengthen the midfield and we've still not done so. And I was there at that game, and that's the, probably the best 45 minutes I watched this season. And we could have been four or five up at half time. I mean, the fact we we're playing Clark Adore in through the middle, you know, beggars belief. But also the fact that you know he kept missing sitters all the time, and we were gun shy, refused to shoot at some points, refused to shoot up. Like in a game, he would rather pass. Like Luke Thomas were, were guilty of this when he played. When he played, just he's been begging to it, and he'd rather pass it because they're scared of missing. You know, and we let him back in the game. He could see two two were coming. I knew at half time. That, that we, we weren't going to win that game and you know I saw that was the game for me that we, we had to win those games been in front Birmingham at home and Millwall at home winnable game Forest when they were down at bottom we also we, we bottled it that night when we went in front Swansea you know just got a new manager in themselves Hull City the, you know even Sheffield United at home we've not exactly played many teams with quality we've just played teams that's got a little bit more confidence just one or two better players inside combined with our team just being generally poor and, and managers that are out of the depth and don't know what they're doing at this level, and a, a bench that's clearly not good enough or got not got the depth or quality to make a difference off the bench while other teams have. And you know we deserve to be where we are. There's no excuses. Fuck COVID. You know we should have a, we should have a team full of uh, first team ready players. Shouldn't be relying on on young lads all the time. And it's good. It's lovely to see. But let, I'll, I'll state this again: if we had a fully fit team and we were doing okay mid table, th those lads would be nowhere near the first team. And I think over time you've got to integrate them. Some, you know, if they're, if they're good enough and they're ready, by all means, do that. Um, we, did, we know we did that with Stones and, and some other lads over the years. But they're only in the side because the, there's no one else. And they brought Wolf and that back in case, in my opinion, in case we don't get anybody in because they've, they've, they've then brought them back. Um, feel sorry for the young lads, just so they don't see this as the standard for Barnsley, as we are better than this, what footballers... W and that, I completely agree, Rob, and that's going back... You know, against the transfer window, not many players are going to want to come into a situation where we're more or less assured of going down unless it's a complete, you know, miracle. And because um, again, the wages will be deducted straight away if they get if they get relegated. They'll probably be playing with a new coach that might not rate them. Um, it's up in sticks and changing an environment where they might not be there for long term. Um, and you want players to come in that are hitting the ground running and in form. And you you won't want to go to a club that's failing at the minute. And uh, I I do I do worry that it could go one or either way. In that term, for the younger lads that are currently here, that it could really make them better players and better mentality, and more mature and stronger characters as a group and individuals. But also at the same time, that it could really ruin them. You look at Jasper Moon this season; he looks completely bereft of any confidence, and yet we keep playing him every week. You know, uh, Kitchen the same. You know, he's like a Barnsley Harry Maguire Kitchen. He's just you know, there were a goal. What were it? Barrow scored in the cup, and he just let it, let a player run past him. He let him to. He, he gave, he turned fully round and then let that player run past him. I'm like, what is he doing? He's just like, completely not got a clue what's going on. 
but and but also they keep making mistakes because there's no lads telling. In my opinion, you've got an older lad in the dressing room. Let, let's say I were in that dressing room around thirty. I'm, I'm I'm more of a role model to him because I've been there and done it. But also I can say things as it is, and they're my peer because they're not. I'm not the manager, so I can say things as it is, and they'll not view me as a as a manager that's getting on at them. I tell them as it is, but I'd also say, listen, you need to you need to buckle up. You need to buckle up because I'm not playing again. I'm not playing with you every week. You're making me look shit. But also put my arm right shoulder and say, listen, I've been there and done it. You know, you're better than this. You're better than this. Do you think Poyer will be doing that? Do you think we've got no lads that will be doing that currently? The only thing I can think is Carlton Morris, maybe Collins. You know, and uh, I do worry about long-term confidence of these young lads. I do agree with you, Rob, in that sense. Stephen, Birkinshaw, I am it. hurts me to say, but if this current ownership group don't leave, it will only get worse. Well, let's hope there's a change in that, mate. Um... We could sink like a stone to League Two. It's not unthinkable if things don't change. Listen, let's you know, let's see what happens. But I th you know, what I'm, what I'm trying to think is if you if you allow that to take place in the first place, where you're allowing players just to leave, and you're not struggling, you're not fighting to keep hold of them, you will struggle, and uh, you could have a double. You know, you could have a double dip. It's been done before. Shopping Poyer made my race look great. My issue with Jack Walton has problems with free kicks. And the none of them can kick straight either. That's the only thing I've got about any keeper that we bring in. They can't kick a ball straight. It always goes out. It's like we're playing rugby. It's like we've got lads that are good keepers, but they think they play rugby. I saw an old video saying you weren't happy with League One and League Two. I think I don't know when that were. Um, I've said before I want us to sign Championship ready players, but I, I I don't like random Austrian players too. What I then alluded to then. It, Previously as well is when we have signed players from League One, League One, we have looked better. But I, I don't want is signing just random players from League One that are not ready. I want somebody to be ready, Championship standard now, like Morris was, and at the time for the first six months like Britain were. I don't want to be bringing a player from another club and giving him two years to develop. I mean, look at Liam Kitchen, you know he did all right, but then he played back end of last season only because we were assured of a playoff place. If we were, if we were trying to get in he wouldn't have been playing they played him because Anderson were injured and also because to give him a bit of game time because he's come back from a long term injury but if I've said that before I, t I take that back <laughs> um, I take that back and we could have got a lot of good players from League One from this season uh, Charlie White who went to Wigan um, from Sunderland a lot of good players that we could have gone for and we never did Crooks who went to Middlesbrough from Rotherham I agree with you, Bailey. And deep down, there were a lot of players that were slagging off the system. But I'm like, I said, I said last season, I, I said, be careful what you wish for, because we could be trying to play football. And there's a reason why Ishmael's not playing that system is because he didn't trust the players to play technical football. We can't play the ball from the back. We've never been ne never been able to. Last ball playing defender I've seen probably Stones at this football club properly, week in week out that were technically good enough that could bring the ball out from the back with confidence. You're trying to make players play a certain system that they're not comfortable with. You can see when they've got hold of the ball, they are not comfortable with the ball. Keep it simple. This is what I'd rectify. Keep it simple. Get into their half and then play. Play all you want in their half. Why are we trying to play football from the back? You're just creating your own problems, especially when you're not good enough technically to do that. It's like, how simple is that what I've just said? And why can't the coaches at our football club seem to implement that? Is it stubbornness because they don't want to, real, they don't want to really move away from their side? their ideology as their view as a coach. I think you should be malleable as a coach. You should look at what worked with other coaches. E.g. Ishmael from last season. Shop come in the summer and be like, well, that's what worked with our lads. Why can't I mix it? Why can't I mix it and play football in the right areas, e.g. the second half of the pitch, but also when it needs to be direct and it needs to go, it needs to go. You know, it, you know, and then regroup. I, I agree with you, Bailey, in that matter. Um, Everton FL. I know this isn't Barnsley, but thoughts on Lampard to Everton. Um, I think it could be one or two things. I think he could use you as a springboard if he does well um, in the future. Because I do think Lampard is very careerist. Um, but also at the same time, I think he could stay with you if you back him properly. Like the owners just, you know, they bring a lot of strange signings in Everton. That on paper look good, but just never seems to click. You need to give him two or three years because, you know, you can't keep chopping and changing managers. They have backed other managers, but with Benitez, it was never going to work. Never going to work. The history at Liverpool, that were a daft decision to make. And in theory, he did well at Newcastle with a very, you know, under-average side. But it was never going to work at Everton with history from before. 
you know, were Agent Benitez from start. You could tell, you know, his heart were at Liverpool all the time, so I don't know why he went to Everton. But Lampard did a good job at Derby, initially did a good job at Chelsea. You know, that team they recreated, then won the Champions League. He just needed a sprinkle finish on top from Tuchel. So, good appointment in theory, and obviously knows the game very well. He'll attract players, because obviously the career he had at, at, at Chelsea when, when with England, so it potentially could be a very good appointment too, mate. Um, bringing the young guns from under-23s. They've got that Bramang, haven't they, on the bench, and he scored goals for Devaney. And it's good that Devaney is actually involved now with the, with the uh, bench. I do have feelings that if Poya goes, if he does get sacked before the end of the season, Devaney will be made into him. And I've had a thought, just get rid of him now, because if we go down, then he's not going to be here anyway. So just get rid of him now and get Devaney and Hassel to end the season. Um, that's my opinion on it. If we're going to get rid of him, get rid of him now. What are we waiting for? Because if he's not good enough now, he's not going to be good enough end of the season. Just get rid of him. Because um, if you're going to have to pay him out because he's got a release clause in his contract, if we do get relegated, he is going. That is official. So... Um, if we're going to go down get rid of him um, but yeah that could work also in his favour because Devane has worked with these younger lads and he knows them personally and they trust him got good relationships so that might work um, LTFC Dan Ram best of luck for you lot this season got a few bars of fans down to Sheffield United away the other week because they've given up going away best of luck got a soft spot for you that says it all doesn't it that says it all um, I predict it will be a relegation fight in League 1 unless Conway and Chi and Go, are we being gradually running to the ground deliberately now? Um, I'm not going to say that. You know my thoughts on the matter. You know my thoughts on it. Um, Paul McLachlan needs new owners before club can go forward. Completely agree, but I think it could get worse before it gets better. Any any financial deal does take time. If you look at the Derby situation, it got leaked to a link there and that, that deal... I think they were from America, they wanted to come in and take over and that, that deal got leaked in the media and that went completely balls up, so we've got to be careful um, but at the same time like you said, I think it's it might get worse before it gets better unfortunately um, Glyn Roberts showed, we all think James Cry should speak up as a part owner, as 20% owner is not allowed well, it'd be interesting to see what he does think of the matter, Glyn doesn't it, I think, I, I thought he would have um, spoke up, I know Gene um, is not very keen didn't mean for that to rhyme, but is um, I know I think I don't know if is is James still. This is what I don't get his position at the football club. Is he still like involved in the recruitment? Um, you'd think he would have something to say. I know he, I know they came out and um, I know they came out and um, made a statement about the closure of the West Stand that apparently has had no uh, media, uh, no repair works done from yesterday. So unless a golden fair is done in that, you know. My dad were there, and he said that there were no, nothing, nothing, com nothing different at all that he could see, unless it's structural and you can't see it. I think that was completely a political game that they were playing. I don't believe a word that they say about that. Um, yeah, Collins will probably go to higher half of the table championship side. Underrated keeper in many respects for championship. Yeah, he's kept us in a lot of games from it being a lot worse than it has been. And good player last season. I'm surprised West Brom have not been linked with him. Because Sam Johnston, their keeper, were linked to teams in the Premier League. And I thought with the Ishmael link, he might go to West Brom. Um, but I think he'll definitely go in the summer to wherever it is. Need to see you and Steve Roby do these vids more together, talking sense. Appreciate that, mate. And I hope you enjoy the video that he did. He does He does know a lot about football, Steve. He's very passionate and, you know, he says it as it is. And, you know, you, you, can't, you can't knock him, can you? He's got no ulterior motives like myself. We just say it as it is because we're fans and we love the club. But when some things need honest truths, you need to be told honest truths. You can't keep burying your head in sand all the time and hoping things get better. Um, if we're top of League One next season, I can guarantee everyone will just forget about what happens every one time. Yeah, I agree with you. Obviously, I think that will be like, well, you know, we've had a bad season and as long as we're winning, that's the, that's the you know, I think people are happy with that regardless of the level, but I want us I think that's the prerequisite, Bailey. I want us to be in the championship. So that would be the bare minimum for me is to get promoted next season, no two ways about it. Um because if we want any standards at this football club, we need to want the best rather than just making the numbers up like we currently are doing. I think long term you've got to look at yourself and think, right, what do we want to be? A top end league one side or a team that that's alright being in the championship as long as we stay up every season last two or three games do we class that as success a lot of our fans do I don't I think that's still shit season 
Um, I think you've got to look you've got to look yourselves in the mirror and think, right, incrementally over a long space of time, what can we do to make us football club better? We've got to have a better standard of players. Right, so we've actually got to change the, the model because it's not currently working because if it were working, we wouldn't be up, down, up, down, up, down all the time. Um, we would have more consistency and more sustainability. So I agree with what you're saying. Um, Assel would never take the job because if he gets sacked, he's out of a job. I agree with you. And I think one of the facts that he... Um, one of the facts that I think, you know, at the end of the day, he's getting, up, he's getting, he's getting a wage, isn't he? So he might not even agree what's going on, Bailey, but he's getting a wage, isn't he? And he's getting employed by the club and he's got a coaching badge for it. So, you know, and I, I do like Bobby, obviously, because what he did for us as a player. Um, but I wouldn't even want to go for Assel. I'd again, I'd rather go for somebody that's got experience at this level, but will that happen? I don't know. I, again, Ryan Lowe, we could have gone for him and it, it, it might have been different, even if we went down. You know, could we have then, you know, helped him out for next season? But that won't happen. Because ball playing defenders are worth more. That's why we pass out from the back. I agree with you, but I, I agree with you. So then we should be not playing that system then. We should be keeping it simple. Having two Mark Roberts type defenders. Do your tackles, win your headers, get into their half. Simple as that. Simple as that. Have, have two wing backs that can do a job. Know how to defend. And listen, it's not hard to cross a ball either. Just get you know, get a, a left footed left left back and a right footed right back, um, and we'll be fine. I'd rather a four at the back and get you. The midfield for me is where you win and lose a game. Priorities midfield. Make your two defenders very simple jobs to do. Win your headers, set pieces, and get organised and get talking. Um, I'll make it simple, don't I? Um, I agree, under Lampard has signed a two and a half year contract. I'm very excited, honestly, more excited than we've got Ancelotti. Best appointment we've made since Moyers. Yeah, I think in theory it could be. Ancelotti, again, it probably passes best now. You know, when he generally goes to sides that's already got players that are top level. And with Everton, need to coach a few at the time and obviously weren't a, a, a comfortable situation for him because there was so much turmoil behind the scenes. Um, I'm going to say I'm playing out sometimes we don't have to just constantly oof it out but understand your limits by the same manner exactly and there's a, there's a time and a place of when to do this and again it goes back to experience knowing when to pass from the back knowing just when to get rid of it and to regroup knowing when to go long and it's about just having a bit more now and streetwise about you and again I go back it goes all back to the same thing is having somebody there that knows how to do the job and somebody been there and already done the job somebody that's talking to them because if it's been instilled in training, you pass it from the back regardless, you're just creating your own problems because then that team that's attacking against you, if we're playing out from the back, they push up. So if it, if it then goes back and forth, back and forth, like it has done a lot this season, their strikers are already there on your 18-yard box. So then if you lose the ball, you've effed it, haven't you? And then even if you go long, you're only going long to the halfway line. And then it goes back as well at the start of the season, we weren't pressing enough. We were, they wanted to keep that pressing in the game. I heard Shop said they wanted to implement the Gigan press still, but we weren't doing that. We we're doing that half fast. So any, you know, we didn't, we didn't, as the, as the players didn't understand the style of play. Um, top of League One, forget that. Take me table at best. We could even be down there. Teams will old manners, if you know that term. Yeah, completely agree. Rough league, young lads won't be beating experience in old heads. Completely agree with you. And there might be games where. Uh, we're at Wimbledon away or Accrington on a Tuesday night and we've got a couple of old lads that just do, do little nudges on players. Again, this season, naivety's cost us a lot. Very innocent. Not been there and done it. The couple of lads that's in mid-30s. Well, I can, I can bully this lad. Put a tough challenge in straight away at first, start, in, in first half, first 20 minutes. That lad will be a bit more tentative to go into a challenge. So I, I do agree with what you're saying, Glenn, there. The possibility of that. Um, what about me, Maxwell? Um uh, Paul McShane, the Dark Arts, <laughs> John Macken, getting bum out. I liked <laughs> not in that way when it when he were uh, getting ball, he'd always stick his ass out, I, I, and that that's I used to love that. I were like get in because it, it made me laugh. They should shut the West Stand so they could give Blades two. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Bailey. But you, I'm not officially saying that because uh, that will get put up in a forum. Um, short term success is pointless. We need a model for the long term. These owners cannot provide it. And this is what I've been saying all along. For any long-term success, you have to have a vision. 
you have to know where you're going with it. Man City owners didn't come in and when their table was in mid table and team were in mid table Man City, average Premier League side, and we're like, right, well, uh, we're gonna do you know, we're we're just gonna spend no money. They were like we're gonna spend to get back investment. Um it can work one or two ways. You can spend wildly and it go completely wrong, but you've got to have a vision. Even I think even if you ask Khalid face to face, what is the vision for this club in two years? He wouldn't be able to tell you. Would not be able to tell you. He don't know what costs at West Ham for repairs. He don't know a real reason why they're closed. All they've done this season is introduce Lebanese flatbreads onto the menu. That's the only thing that I can think that they've done. And I, and I don't even like Lebanese food, so you know the you know I'm not a nor a penny more as well. So you know that's the only thing that they've done this season. And I can that's been it's been different. Um, right guys I've been on an hour so if you've just come on we've been linked with three players Tyree Simpson a striker from uh, Ipswich who's currently on loan at Swindon 11 goals this season he's also been linked to a few other sides only 19 is the answer maybe in two or three years yes but it's a difficult situation for him to come into other one is Luke Bolton from Man City being on loan at Dundee United Wickham and where's the other one Luton and 22 out of contract in the summer could be a good signing won't cost much um, but again goes back to what we need which is an older lad in the midfield to help him out which is why I think lads have struggled this season because they've got nobody to look back to uh, <laughs> he ain't even got a bad back Glyn. he's just got a bad attitude um, and then we've been linked to a French midfielder a French Moroccan midfielder called Amin Bassi who's been linked on loan from Mets in the French First Division until the end of the season. I think Luke Bolton could be a decent signing for League One. I completely agree with you. But like I've said, we need lads who are proven at this level. You know, are we preparing for life in League One? I think we are. I think we are. I think they've given up. I think if they really wanted to have stayed up the 1st of January, that it, I know people don't agree with me, would have brought Kane back, midfielder, who's playing well in form, getting behind front two, change the formation, get an old lad to sit there, Sell Palmer first of January, um, bring Sibit back inside, put Moon on bench, um, bring another centre defender in. I would have looked at a left back, left left footed left back to help Vita till the end of the season, and I would have probably gone for more pace. Four or five players first week. You've already got your target sorted out from October because you know the season's going shit. You know we could have had a chance. But um, unfortunately, we're not. Yeah, he's done well, Kieran. He's done well, and he might be a little good young gem. But again, it goes back to one thing, don't it? If he do, if he does well, sell on value. But we've got to make sure if this is what if the if they're still here. I hope they're not. Everyone knows my feelings on it. They've got to get the fee for them. Um, yeah. Could be, I think, and I think it goes back to what you're saying, Gabriel. Is if we're going, if we, if we're going down already, they just thought we may as well get a League One player. Ben Whiteman was a miss signing, yep, and that was down to Struber opening his big gob because he didn't want to be in the job at the time. So he, he would, he was, it was all, all right for him to say his personal opinion because he knew that he wanted to leave anyway, and then he went to New York about a week later and left us in the shit. Um, and yeah, we got Matty James in, but I think long term Whiteman would have been a great signing from Doncaster. Um, and he would have been the captain for me if Mowat had left because she'd already got somebody there they were a captain at Donny done a great job there him and, him and Mowat together you know we probably wouldn't have got James Ben but I think that would have been a really good signing that really did frustrate me because he wanted to come and then Struber said those comments why would you want to come to a team where it manager slagged you off saying he's not ready for the championship right guys I'm going to do five more minutes so just ask me a few questions if you've got any before I go thank you for all tuning in thank you for all likes and everyone viewing I do appreciate it on a Sunday evening. Um, and let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if you've got any comments. And, um, yeah. Yeah, Clayton to Donny. Uh, Arla Dean, great signing as well. Yeah, because what happens, Kieran, is the restrict us. I can't afford it, Craig. And I'm driving and I... I uh, <laughs> I don't drink much no more, mate. So Tuesday, I'm uh, drinking coke and uh, I'm not paying. I'm from Barnsley, mate. I don't, I don't get drinks for anyone else. I'm, I don't know, mate. Yeah, I don't know. Um, whether I'm going outside the ground to hand things out, I don't know. Um, 
and then not going in the ground, I don't know. It depends how I feel, Bale. It depends if I want to get depressed for 90 minutes and then dep be depressed till the end of the week. It depends how I feel, mate. Um, but going back to what I was saying to you, Kieran, about um, the signings, because obviously we only go for a certain age and anything about else above that is like a no-no. We restrict the signings that we can't actually get. So we restrict the number of players that we can actually look for because they only look for three years old to 26. So then we... We, we we can't look above anybody above that age regardless of ability what they could do to the side I mean look at Jack Wilshire free agent all season would he not have done a good job for his you know and people go well he's not the same player but come on an half decent Jack Wilshire it'd still be a, an absolute steal for us and Lynn, I'd say, and people go well wages I'd say to him listen well you're not playing anywhere else are you pal so you know you've made your money you've made your money in your career I mean look at Andy Carroll at Reading and then he's gone to West Brom you know again you know could he have not like this is what baffles me he's like do they not see that these types of things would make us better? And it's just, you just restrict us with, with, with that decision. And it just infuriates me so much that there's so many free agents that we could have gone for at the start of the season that other teams snap up because they realise that they can do a job elsewhere. Luton do it all the time with free agents. And so look at what they they do with their team and how the way that they've gone this season. Um, paperwork, mate. They got rid of all scouts in lockdown, didn't they? Um, first lockdown. And... It's just all data, isn't it, now, which infuriates me. I mean, people go, well, you can watch them on YouTube. I, I, I'm an old school lad, me. I like to watch... If I were a scout, I'd like to watch them in person. I'd like to get to know what they like, the characters. You need characters in the side. You need characters that can come in, you know what I mean, and can do, you know, be a good influence in the dressing room. You know, a bit about them. They want to come to the club. You, you know, you want to meet them in person type thing rather than never meeting them before and then they'll just turn up and be an absolute, you know, pain in the ass and an absolute arsehole. Um, again, Kieran, you know he's been there, he's done it. Um, Lynn and Critter is a great away day. Don't miss that fantastic fans proper club away day. It's only they look after you. Yeah, I went to that Crinton away day. It was a really good day out. So, in in a good thing, the away days will be cheaper. Um, the away days will be cheaper, and uh, the tickets will be cheaper. And we probably would win a few games, but I want us to be in the championship. I want us to succeed at this level. I'm fed up of it struggling every every year. Last year were a one off clearly because the, if they wanted us to be same same position, they would have backed manager, and they would have backed the club, and they would have used this season as a catalyst. Yeah. Weighing something like that, all data and stats, but they don't know what they're looking for. Uh, something like that because players now cost money, don't they? Um. Gabriel, um, I've, I've put a post up about that, mate. I won't, I won't, I wouldn't have been actively involved if, if there wasn't. Um, you know, I know there is a lot of fear behind that. I, I've, I've spoken, um, I've spoken about that on the Facebook group, group that I'm a part of. Um, I wouldn't have been involved if there weren't genuine interest. I won't be wasting your time or mine or anyone else's and be dragging people along with it. It's, it's going to take time. It's not going to be a, a quick thing. I hope it is, of course. But these things take time. We have to stay patient because in the long term, it'll benefit us. Um, so I can't tell you that you know the 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 whens and this that and the other because first of all I've signed a legal NDA so I hope that reassures you so I want to sign something that's a legal document if it weren't legitimate um, but also at the same time I can't reveal much more than that because um, I'm obliged to do so. I hope you're 100% though by end of week. Um, oh well looks closed doesn't look like we're signing anyone this window according to Lee is it the transfer deadline tomorrow it is isn't it so it's going to be difficult to get those three lads in because listen there's other clubs in, interested in them I mean Bassey we're going to have the same situation with the visa and the uh, the permits there because obviously we're Brexit and um, all that stuff will have had to play at a certain level that was the issue with Alari and Larry Secker that they lied about at the start of the season and said it were injuries, and they said it were an actual visa issue, which is why it took so long. Which is why I thought, again, go for more domestic players. It makes it more simple, especially if you've got m not much time. And you know what you're working with then. It's a lot less protracted and you know a lot less complicated. Um, and the other two lads, Bolton and Simpson, especially with Tyree Simpson, other clubs are linked with him. And I imagine that Luke Bolton will be linked to other clubs. Um... I completely understand where you're coming from, Gabriel. You know, if you don't know and you just get told something, you're like, well, I want proof. People want proof of everything. 
Um, but at the same time, it's not helpful when other people are just coming out and saying, you know, it's a hoax and all this stuff. And it's like, well, it's that much of an hoax that we were on the Chronicle front page on Friday. I've got a meeting with Dan Jarvis tomorrow over Zoom regarding everything because he wants to know, you know, his in input in the situation there. Um, we've got the meeting at the garrison on Tuesday. The club has officially been in contact with me to ask my intentions. So I thought, I, I know for a fact that if, if it was something that, that they weren't worried about, they wouldn't have been contacting me because they want to know what my intentions are on Tuesday. And I've got uh, a meeting with Adam Oxley at Radio Sheffield on Wednesday and it was in the Daily Mail today. So we're that much of a, uh, what what they say that we are, um, that, we're, that all that's happened in the, happening in the space of a week. So you know things are in the right direction. Um, but there we go. You know, it's it's a, it's, a, it's very tiring. It's like a full-time job and the abuse that I'm getting, I'm fed up with it because... The, they won't say it to my face, let's put it that way. They'd rather go behind a keyboard and type all this stuff. And listen, people are tapped to their own opinion, but listen, I, people only have to understand that I love this club and I want it back. And people are like, oh, well, you've already got your club. It's still running, in it? Well, it's not... The soul's gone from it, though. The identity, what this club's about, the communication that is completely eroded, the apathy that I have going to the games, I don't look forward to going to any games no more. It's been like that for a long time, even when we were playing well. Well, I, I couldn't go last season because of lockdown. Even under Stendhal, I felt like, you know, it, you know, it's not going to be long term, this, because you knew what were coming. You know, it's just, I'm just fed up with it all. I, you know what I mean? I'd rather know, I'd rather know where we stand than getting told five, you know, how many years ago we'd be in the Premier League and on paper have these billionaires coming and they never spend a fucking penny. And they just spend, they just spend what they've spent on, on player transfers back into it. It's like, you, you can't run a club like that. You've got to. Every successful businessman will know, and even rational person will know. To to be successful, you have to spend some money. It's not about going overboard. I've never said that. It's about being sensible. And if you're going to sell a player, sell them for the best fee possible, which we didn't do for Pinnett Lindsay. Um. So that, that's it, guys. Uh, right, where are we? We don't. Well, this is what there's. Um, I'm gonna. I'm doing a presentation on, on just regarding this. Um, I, well, regarding that, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go into it on Tuesday. We've got facts um, regarding um, how much money that they have inputted in prof in terms of actual money in and the money that they've got back. So how much money that we've made as a club, we've actually lost money, and they still owe two and a half million um, in terms of payment because they had to make another four point three and they've not made that yet, which is why there's a lot of stuff going behind the legal scenes between the crimes and the club. Um, maybe you know. Called it weeks ago that we wouldn't sign anyone. Are you planning on bringing supporters' trust on board? In terms of uh, the movement itself on the Facebook group, or just in general, um, is that question? If you could uh, elaborate on that, then I will answer that. Um, again, I'm not the leader of, of this, you know, hopefully takeover transition. I'm just a mere fan that's obviously people do know that know that I love the football club and I've wanted this for a long time because I could see it coming. Um, in in the end, that it would just wilt and wilt and wilt, and we would just go. Standards would get worse and worse and worse, and we'd accept mediocrity, and they wouldn't put no money in, and they'd just completely stop doing what they're doing, which is what's happened. Um, and that's that. Um, potential is there for the cash, but how if they won't progress our club? It's all contradicting. Potential is there for the cash. Well, it, it, this is what I mean. If you want to make money, you have to put money in. That's how business works. You cannot, unless you have got a gem from somewhere and somebody says, right, 200 million, you know, or a player, 10 million, you know, it's like, it's not, I mean, unless they get a massive injection of football money into the football club, they're not going to, you know, this is what I don't get and I've never, never got. How can they expect to make money if they don't put none in? You know, and people go, well, look at Derby. The money they spent there is ridiculous, though. What I'm saying is you can still make money. In, in other ways 
you know, listen, I wanted the United front from start, mate. Um, we, I'll, I'll tell you that situation now whilst we're on here. We had a member of the group that was, um, that didn't agree with the comments that were made and deleted them. I weren't a member really as such. I was on on the admin side, but I didn't really go on the group as much until, you know, I, I did because I was busy and plus I had the garrison um, meeting I wanted to organise and then behind the scenes deleted them, removed them all, which I didn't agree with, um, hence why they weren't on the group the next day. Um, and then I wanted to create a united front and say that, listen, I don't agree with what, you know, with the way that it's been held with, um, you know, and I apologise to, to, to two prominent members. I allow one back in that I know personally and just explain what had gone on, that those views weren't representative of myself or the group or the people behind the group, behind the scenes, that they weren't a member of it. And I wanted a united front and I felt that the tit for tat, you know, not for myself, but from other, other people that's in the group on both sides weren't helping. And I just wanted a united front, regardless of what you think, just to be respectful of each other. And initially that was like kind of okay, we'll do that. And then the very next day, another another comment had just come in. Um and I'm like, if you know, if you want if you want to just play those games, that's completely up to you. I am I'm 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 too old to be playing games now, playground games, you know. I, I haven't got the time to be doing that. So, you know, and I said that and I stated that that I'd rather have somebody come and come and say it. Uh, over over private message and listen if they wanted to get on board then by all means they can do so but at the same time I think they have to they have to answer a lot for I think they've given them a, a, an easy ride at times I'm going to be honest that's my opinion on the matter and yes they do hold meetings which they have to do because they're a supporters trust and they have pressed the meetings and I appreciate that but at the same time I do believe that they could have been held the, the club could have been held to account a lot more over the years than they have been in various ways, that's my opinion on it. And I think regardless of what happens, I think it needs a restructure. Um, that's my opinion on it all. Because I think there needs to be a bridge, a better, more straight up, let's let's see what's going on um, than that. But I, I want a United front, mate. But you're going to have different camps all the time. Some people are happy what's going on. There's some people... Um, and and just continue and think well as long as we play every week that's all we want but you know I've had enough of it but you've got to respect my opinion I'll respect yours and I'll respect people that still want them in because that's their opinion I can't change that but then don't knock me because I wanted to try to change something and I'm not going to do it like in a way that's going to contradict the best interest of the football club I'm going to do it in a peaceful manner I've not done anything per on a personal level that's you know, being anything but peaceful, the way that, you know, I've commented is very respectful. I never call people out personally, um, you know, anything like that. I've just wanted to stop in it, you know, going on these forums and stuff and, you know, saying things is not helpful. Um, and people are right, you know, right to call things out, but sometimes it's not helpful at all. Gabriel... Some of the users seem so deluded still, while some are like me, they're just apprehensive, understandably so, about these other prospective owners that you mentioned. Yeah, completely, I get that. And um, I, again, I'll reiterate this, um, that I wouldn't be involved if they weren't genuine and if they weren't somebody that would have the best interest of the football club at heart. Um, so I hope that, that's what I've say on the matter. You know, if they didn't have the best interest of the football club at heart, I wouldn't be as involved as I were or am. Um, I wouldn't have spoken to them as much as I am and I wouldn't be organising as much if I didn't feel that they were genuine, didn't have the best interest of the football club at heart or offered a better alternative vision for a long-term success at Barnsley. Um, I would just be happy and just go to the games and just watch as Wilton suffer. Um... I'm not going to answer that, Craig. You'll have to ask them. Cause if I say yeah, and then it's not true, um, but it wouldn't surprise me. Um, we know Ryan. Do they want? Well, Lee Johnson. Listen, I thought I think Sunderland. You know, in, in, they've, had, they've had a rough run of results, but come on, I think it's a bit premature sacking him. Bloody hell! I know, I know they want success, but it's a bit uh, hip shooting there, in my opinion. Getting rid of him. And they can have. A, should we do a swap deal? Give him Ash Baggy. We'll have Johnson back. 
Uh, to be fair, it's like Luke says, there's never going to be a United fund. It just won't happen simply due to a diversity of opinions. You know, I, I want there to be as, as much as possible, but like I said, everyone's going to be in different camps. But one thing I do want is respect to each other. And, you know, I think the thing that living in 2022 is that if somebody has an opinion and you don't agree with them, they very, automatically think that you're wrong. And it's like, well, what the fuck's that about? It's like, at the end of the day, that's the, someone's opinion. Doesn't mean that they're wrong just because you say that they're wrong. This is the, this thing about social media is like, because they've got a different opinion. Well, you're not right because I'm telling you you're not. Well, who the fuck are you to tell me that? I've got an opinion. It's different to you and that's it. Respect it. Respect that opinion or don't listen to it. You don't have to, you know, that's what, this what, you know, maybe I'm a bit old school in that sense, but it's about opinions. It's a free world, apparently. You can say what you like and it seems like no matter what you say, somebody jumps on your back. It's like it does me head in. Um, it's just appreciate the fact that I've got an opinion. It might not be the same as yourself, but just respect it, you know, and it's like, I'll respect yours, but it's like, how can I respect you if you've got no respect for me type thing? And it's like, this is what the world should be about now. None of this, oh, they've done this, they've done that. Oh, they're this, they're that. Does me head in. Um, Andrew, I think, Luke, that they haven't got the money they say they have. However, the strategy is buy six clubs, for example, then stick to the way of making, say, one million per season out of those clubs. Well, portfolio business then, which is what I stated back in 2018, that we're just a portfolio club, and I got absolutely slammed for that. Um and I stated that as long as they make a little bit of money at, you know, then they'll put back, that back in. That's all they're bothered about. And the proper, you know, Chen Lee is a property developer by trade before he, you know, that's how he made his money. They, the buy, and then when, when they, then they will try and put as much value on it as possible. In my opinion, it feels like the devaluing at the minute, the way that it's been run. And then they'll sell it when it's, when they're ready to do so. Um, so that you know, that's the way that that works. Because at the end of the day, you know, the finance people aren't they? They're not football people, which is what concerned me to start when they first came in. Hey, Jim Jams, great video as usual. Thank you, mate. Keep it up. You have my backing plus many do's. <laughs> it's nice to hear. I sometimes, uh, <laughs> dis I sometimes disbelieve that, but thank you. I appreciate. Also, Red Barnes of Chronicle, and you were mentioned. Yeah, they emailed me earlier in the week, asking if they could do a. Um, He's on it, so I said, yeah, more than happy to do so. Um, boy, mate, come here, Boris. We'll put them in a room together. Oh, I had any, I and Nathan, hope we keep him well. Well, I don't know how they I don't know how they're putting value on the club. So if you can give me a comment how they're currently putting value on the football club to make it a, a lot more profitable, then you do tell me now, mate. Um Spot on look, they know they can't buy land ground out rob Well, exactly, because the crimes weren't willing to sell the ground. That's the reason so that's why they're one of the reasons that, that they closed the West Standing was due to that, hence the reason that they weren't willing to pay it because they would have to pay because the crimes and the council still owned the ground itself. Um, every one of their clubs is in the same position with unhappy fans where you all can't keep me wrong. Once fat owners feel they can't milk us anymore, they'll leave. By then it'll be too late. 100% agree with you, mate. As long as this continues and they think that we're going to put up with it, which I'm so glad that there's fans that are actually now agreeing with what I've said for the last three and a half years I on my own saying this, that they will keep doing a little bit, little bit, little bit and taking it. You can't keep taking... It's like being in an, abu it's like being in an abusive relationship. You will keep getting shit off someone unless you st stand up for yourself. Be like, no, we're not having it. We're fucking not having it any longer. We're going to stand up for what we believe in and it's not right what's going on. How can you say well, this is what's right what's going on? I, again, Nathan, I want, you, I want you to answer. How are they not devaluing the club? Because what money have they put into the football club to make us better over the past four or five years? They've, they've put none of their own money in. They've even alluded to that. The only money that they're putting back in is from transfers that they make. And even then it's not enough because they because they basically cut short as, as, as players by not gaining for the prices that they're getting for. They're selling for half the fee. So I'd like you to just explain on that with that sarcastic comment that you made. Um... Melanie, I can't go into that. I signed an NDA. I've already explained myself earlier in the video. Um, 
And Drew Sharp, it's like my, me buying 200 terraced houses at cut prices, but make £20,000 on each one. ka -ching. there you go. Um, and every one of their clubs is in the same position with unhappy fans. We all can't be wrong. Once owners feel they can't milk us anymore, they'll leave by then. It'll be too late. And one thing, one thing that will hurt them more, more than anything is the reputation. The reputation. Because they are business people and they, are, they will have... Um, they will have obviously some credos somewhere. If this, if people see the reputation being damaged, they'll want to walk out of it. Um, and it's the same at, at other clubs. So not all of us are wrong, are we? But apparently, to some people that there's all that we're trying to ruin the club, we're a disgrace and a stain on the town and on the club. And you're a disgrace of what you're doing. It's like fucking look, look in the mirror, look at those people that are fucking damaging the club, and actually tell me if I'm a disgrace or they're a fucking disgrace. Because I want my club to prosper whilst they want it to fucking suffer while spending no fuck all money. So you tell me who the disgrace is. I'm fucking fed up of hearing it. Does me fucking head in. I've supported this club since the, 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 since the day that I went in, 1994, and I gave anything for that football club. I fucking die for it. And there's people questioning my fucking intentions of why I want change. I want the fucking best for it. I love it. It does me fucking head in. Fuck's sake. You know me, Luke. I tried defending the owners for years, but this season they've shown the true colours and firmly believe, firmly believe because they couldn't buy the ground. They've given up. I, I think I think I agree with you, mate. And listen, you you've got my opinion, um, and uh, when from the start, and I still respected you that day. And I think in theory, bringing younger lads through, but also you've got to you've got to have um, you've got to have a you've got to have a blend. You've got to have a blend, and I think it could have worked. And we could have done similar to Brentford. And in theory, I I always said all along. In theory, this could it could have worked, but the fact that they they're doing they do half for it, they bring young players in, but they don't have anybody to help them, and then the you know and then because because the, there's nothing long term, you're never going to get sustainability or success short term or long term. Because you're chopping and changing your manager every eight to ten months because they're not good enough, or if they are, they they use as a stepping stone. Thanks, Dave, Super Dave. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, look, I agree with everything you're saying, but who would, who would we get in if they decided to sell up? I think I've answered that. I can't state that due to NDA. I've signed a legal NDA, Melanie, so I can't state who it is, who's interested, who's, who's making moves behind the scenes. I can't state that. I think the club has got a lot of prospects. In fact, I think the academy needs to be helped out again because that was one of the best that we had outside the championship. Um, I think the facilities that we've got, you don't find many training grounds outside the Premier League next to the ground. I think we've got a good core fan base. I think if you you, you could bring a, a good decent fan base back if you actually promoted it properly, um, you could in fact bring a lot of good young hungry players here. Um, so I think there is a lot going for us. Would you rather us carry on on how we are or get another owner who spends millions and gets us bust? Well, well, I don't. <laughs> I've been coming onto this channel for three and a half, four years. I've never at once stated that I want us club to spend millions and millions. But what I do expect is to be competitive. And there's a way and means of doing so. You look at Luton, you look at Blackpool this season. You look at Blackburn and Preston over the last few years. They've never spent loads and loads of money. They've just been sensible. They'll bring a player through. They're selling for the best fee that they can get and they put that money back in. But also at the same time, they will think, right, well, let's look at a free agent here. Let's look at a loan here. Rather than sneering down at their age, they do it properly. I look at likes of Derby and Wednesday, the way that they've done it. They've obviously suffered due to it. But I, I never ex I never ex expected like us to spend £10 million, pounds, which is a middle ground there, Melanie. M middle ground. Obviously, we've got to spend something to be successful, but I'm not saying spend 10 20 £30 million. Pounds on every window because obviously that would be unsustainable unless you got the money and you, you get the success uh, Jean-Michael Serry to Fulham 40 million from Nice pants down Conway sticking that in the back pocket pull at them son <laughs> apologies if already discussed but thoughts on Civic leaving and training on demand to be a centre back uh, the second thing about on demand to be a centre back absolute joke I mean clearly they weren't play they're not playing much anyway so you know is there any midfielders that's keeping him out of the side that's good enough at the minute? No. I think he's seemed like one of the only players that's got a bit of bat him this season. He, he puts his foot about. He, he was brought him as a centre midfielder, but yet we're retraining him to be a centre defender. Doesn't make no sense at all. And uh, Civic to Hearts, well, it, it makes sense for Toby because obviously he weren't playing regular and he weren't valued by the club. 
Um, and the manager didn't rate him because he weren't in the side or the owners didn't rate him because he weren't in the side or whatever. I don't know who makes the decisions behind the scenes, who, who knows. But the way we're treated over the last four or five months has been a joke and there's, he's better than some players in that side that are starting every week. And uh, that comment that the CEO made w was baffling, to say the least. I completely agree with you. It's like they think that they care more than fans that actually do, or that are actually from the town and actually do care. It's like they do not give a flying fuck about us as people or or as a club. She and Lee actually liked a post that were made by um, a guy on Twitter early in the week saying that, basically saying that they're, they're doing nothing on, on purpose and he liked it. So what what does that say? What does that fucking say? Um, is Steve preparing a bid for Club Luke? Only listen, I'd have Steve on on backroom staff. He'd, uh, I'm not behind Twitter group, and I was invited onto the uh, the Facebook group initially. I've been more or less made the front man um, due to basically not due to basically putting out a firestorm on there and then I thought I can only trust myself to, to really run it properly so that's the way that it's been run behind myself and others behind the scenes but I'm not the reason and people go why has this Facebook group been created by by these prospective owners well first of all it's independent from it we thought having more people in one area would be better Facebook is a very good way to get messages across on social media nowadays with the use of social media and also it'd be better to have people on one page rather than two or three splinter pages Get everybody together, get organised. That's the way that change comes across. You don't just do it by being unorganised. Cheers, Wayne. I appreciate that. I, I hope you could send that message to the amount of people that message me every day, call me every name on the fucking sun, the slander that I that I get that I could take people to court over, but I've not got the time or I can't be asked to do so on certain forums. It does me fucking head in. It's like, I absolutely love this football club. It's like some of my happiest memories in my life have been there watching Barnsley. And it's like, it feels like me and one when I'm watching Barnsley FC. But last fr two, last, last, since August, it's been painful. I, like, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Like, I'm making any excuse not to go because I can't see us being, being run like this. I can't see the, the, the lack of soul, the lack of love and the lack of energy that I feel from the games like I used to have. So it's like, it, it, it just really gets my goat up that people think that I'm here just to take the piss and things like that and the shit that I get. It's like, listen, the way that I go about it is like, you know, might be different to what people want, but you can't get change unless you actually want to do something. It's all right sitting here going, well, I wish we could get new owners. It's like, well, listen, there's an opportunity here. There's a group of people that's coming together that's actually trying to create change. And you, you, you fucking slant. You're basically slagging it off. Going, going you'd, rather, you'd rather have it as it were. You'd rather the club get relegated and spend fuck all money and just be a shit fucking club to go to and having no 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 fucking set of standards at all and just bring in 18, 19 year olds here and as long as they make half a million profit every now and again, that's fucking acceptable. It's like, no, we fucking take what's ours back. It's our fucking football club. It's our town. We fucking take it back. You know, we put people in, even if they're not from the area, they actually fucking care. They get the interest of the town at art. These lot don't fucking care. When did they ever fucking care? It only cared to them when it mattered. It only cared to them when it mattered on their fucking terms. Conway were fucking all over media when we were doing well. Every fucking time we're doing well, is it fucking media? And it should be fucking there when we're doing shit. He weren't there yesterday, were he? Weren't there yesterday, somebody that apparently cares about football club more than fans that actually go. And I didn't go yesterday because I had work. And I thought, you know what? I, I, fuck it, I can't go through it. I can't put myself through it. See, this is, our, this is our passion I am about this club. I spent an hour and a half talking to you about the football club. If I didn't care, I wouldn't be on this fucking channel. It, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I agree with you there, Matty. Uh, Matty, Andrew, about the Matty James decision. Thoughts at the protest at the weekend? I didn't think, well, first of all, the chance, if that's what people want to do, that's their opinion. And that's understandable because obviously the way that we've been playing, the position in the league, the fact that we've got an inept manager, the fact that they've invested no money in this transfer window, the fact we've got a chief exec that doesn't know what he's on about, the fact we've got owners that don't put input any of their own time into the football club, and the fact that the way that the fans are being treated, you know, I won't I weren't surprised with the with the chance or anything like that, but to uh but to do what they did obviously after the game with the box office, I, I don't agree with at all. And um you know, the way that that, that was um, handled was not correct. And um, like we've said all along, the people that's involved in the Facebook group, um, 
you know, we don't we don't associate ourselves with those actions. We we actually never made yesterday the official day of protest. It's going to be QPR. Um, peaceful protest. We're not going to make it about any employees that work for the football club. It's not about them. It's about the people at the top. That's all it will be aimed at. There's ways and means of doing protests. There's a ways and means of doing it. You know, like we are doing with the media approaches and things like that, and not a penny more stance. And you know, if you want to boycott, you can do. We're also respectful of other people that have got opinions. Um, so you know, about the things that happened after the game, Melanie, I don't don't condone it, and I don't think it's great at all. It looks bad on us as a whole together because people just assume they're right. Because apparently, I instigated all that. Apparently, on Twitter yesterday, even though I weren't at the game. Um, and people just say, well, because you're in the same group as them, like kind of the same camp, you were instigating it. And I said, no, I actually want peaceful protest. If you're going to do it, just do the chance and that's it. Uh, if people are adamant on doing so, because that I can't control individuals' opinions. Um, but also of their actions as well. But at the same time, I thought it were really out of order what they did. And, uh, you know, Beth's somebody that's... Um, Somebody that's worked at the club for a long time and she's a lovely lady and she didn't deserve what she got yesterday. So I hope those fans are found and they're banned from ground and stuff because, you know, if they're found to be a part of the Facebook group, they'll be banned from the group as well. Um, as soon as we find out who they are. Um, appreciate Gabriel. Uh... Ethan, I, I, I appreciate your... Uh... That's 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 what we wanted to do, Melanie, because people were desperate to do it after the Forest game in the week, and we're like, no, we need to wait. We need to wait. We need to do it proper. So whether that's a march from the town, as Cardiff used to do when they didn't agree with the change of colour of kits, so there's a big number of us, and we can get you know a lot of media attention on that. Um, the the posters that we're going to be introducing, that's going to be handed out on Tuesday, and going to be distributed before the QPR game. We didn't want to rush it. We do, you know, even though there is a rush to get new owners in, like people, are, you know, and, and I am too. Of course, I am. But there's a way as a means of doing about it. But in the meantime, we've said no, not a penny more stance. Um, you know, not buying anything in the ground, no merch. Don't go to the Huddersfield game unless you have, unless you want to, because they get fifty percent of the proceeds. Um, the chance, you know, social media pressure, me contacting the media, anything like that. Um, you know, that's the way to go about it. You know, that doesn't help a help our cause at all the way that they did because it'll give it will give those people that's that's kind of um that's put us down and put me down it'll do just associate that with me immediately and with other people in the group immediately and just everyone in general um but peaceful protest can be done and you know if it's if it's done in the right way it's just as much as you know because obviously as you saw you know people just say it's bang out of order and i agree with you because it were morally a bang out of order what they did um gabriel they say nothing to me at the game uh, they say nothing to me at the game. If they would say anything negative, there would be two options for them. Either, you know, we'll go. You know, if it's something that's personal, we'll go outside and sort it. Um, or, you know, if that's your opinion, that's fine. But just say it to me face. Positive feedback I get a lot of, but negative feedback. Um, the last time somebody negative feedback was at Leeds United away under Marais, and they ended well. Didn't end well for them, um, but. I'll not go into that because, again, people will just use that against me. Um, but, yeah, more I get negative feedback on messages uh, and on comments because they can't say it to my face because it's easy for to, them to do so because they think they'll not get as much um, cop back. But when it's positive, yeah, it's, it's usually both. But more recently, negative. Um Away games, I don't know, mate. Depends how much money I've got. Um, depends again. I might if it's if it's too painful, I might just not go to the homes and and then pick and choose the aways. You know what I mean? Regarding next season, some fans took it too far. They did, mate. They did. I'm sure they will get caught on CCTV. Cameras are all over nowadays, so they'll get caught, won't they? Um, hiya, mate. Has there been any dialogue between the incumbents and the potential buyers? That's not a question for me to answer because. Um, Obviously, I'm not. I wish I could have the money to get involved into it. Um, but that's something that you'd have to ask them. 
Um, I mean, I hope there has, and sometimes there, there will be dialogue behind the scenes that people won't disclose due to various legal reasons. I hope there has, of course they hope there has. Um, but I'm merely the person that is trying to get the fans together as a united force as much as we can and put pressure on the owners and let them know that they're not wanted no longer from our perspective and that the way that they're treating the club currently is not in line with the way that a successful or a prosperous football club is run and they need to know that. So that's, the that's I hope. You can appreciate that I can't answer that question really because obviously I'm not, uh, I don't speak to the incumbents every day. Um, that, exactly that, in, and even if people don't want to chant, that's their that's their choice to do so. Um, you know, that's their choice to do so. You know, if, if they want to join in the chants or not, and if, even if people don't agree with that line of opinion and they don't agree with the protests at all or whatever, that's their choice. But we've got to have respect, haven't we? We can't just be like, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm fed up with this. Oh, well, you're this, you're that. It's just, listen, just respect what they're doing. It's their life. Let them do what they want as long as they're not taking it over the line like yesterday. And then you can call it out and say it's out of order, you know? It's no, it's uh, I am doing one, mate. It's on Wednesday, um, and then I do, I've not spoken to the people yet when it will be put out, but it's Wednesday, uh, confirmed. Jim Jams, um, cheers, Wayne. I appreciate that. Um, it's going to be peaceful, mate. And um, listen, any we're going to make that clear. And if anybody wants to take it further, then the, then they're not associated with us. I've said that um, before as well. Have the prospective new owner evaluation for the club or not? Again, I, can't, I don't know, Craig. I don't know the answer. All I know is that I just want, you know, I got approval off them to, you know, they wrote a statement, they sent it over to me, I put it on the Facebook page. Um, that's the last time I spoke to them, so I don't know the ins and outs, the finances. I'm just merely the uh, the social media person behind, I'm not like not their spokesman, but I'm just the person that's trying to rally the fans together. Um. Melanie, is there anyone we can talk to about the proposed buyers? Again, like I've said, they don't want the identities to be revealed. It's very rare in, um, how do I explain it, transition periods where re uh, details are not provided until the very end. I'm sure when they're ready, they'll come out and reveal themselves. And obviously, then I'm sure you can approach them. Uh, yeah. Sean, okay, like you doing good for Barnsley. We're stuck in nightmare at the minute with these clowns in charge. Who do you support, Sean? Um, I hope we can appreciate there's not much I can say regarding that those you know financial situations. I'm not involved in any prospective deal. I'm just somebody that merely wanted to show the fans that there were um that there were interests and but also the fans wanted a bit of reassurance and they said okay we'll provide a statement so that's what I asked for and we got and that is it apart from that everything that we're doing is separate you know obviously you know that that's that um it's run by the fans for the fans as is as is this channel <laughs> now Gabriel you know there's not enough people that's mature enough like that no more I mean, if I disappear with people, it's um, oh, wait. my back's killing me. Radio Sheffield, we don't push these owners enough. Not Khalid. We don't want want Toby Tyke in lights in America. We want questions answered. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's very cloak and dagger, Luke. As someone that knows you, I know you believe everything you say. Just so the interest is serious and not more of the same. <sighs> Legally, you can't really. You can't legally. You can't. I can't say much, Craig. I've signed an NDA, so I can't really go into details. If if I do say if I do say it verbally, and it, that that's that broke, you know, because there's been deals that that were meant to be done at that was the people got leaked to it were that deal broke down immediately. So I can't I can't go into details, especially on a YouTube live and, and say who it is. You know, deals of this sort of takeovers that like when these came in. They're only they were they were only linked in the last two or three days before they actually bought the club. There were concrete rumours, so you know we've got to be patient. You know I I can't provide the answers. You know what I mean? Um, but listen it, again, I reiterate it. I don't know how many times. 
if if they weren't if they were if they, they were taking the piss or if there were people that weren't legitimate or if there were people that didn't have the money if the people that didn't have the best interest of football club at heart if they didn't feel the club would be in a better place I wouldn't be involved I wouldn't have spoken to them I wouldn't have asked for a statement of them. Just got recommended on my YouTube page. I have no idea about what is being discussed, but I wish you all a good night. Cheers, Tobias. Hope you're keeping well. Thank you. Fraser, what's your thoughts on Greenwood? Well, if it's true, you know, and he's obviously been arrested for it and there's the evidence that's there, it's uh, it's not a good look at all. Um, and I just hope the girl's okay. Um, someone just sat the manager. Yeah, I know, mate. We, 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 I'd, I'd like Johnson. I thought he did well. If it, You know, again, but he's got to be... I think he plays a good style of play. Um, for League One, I think he'd be good for us. If we went down. What was the club's contact with you regarding Garrison? What have they said? Um, they just say, well, they just stated that they were aware of the meeting. Um, they wanted a safety officer there, which I couldn't understand because it's like it's not on your grounds. Um, it's not actually being run by the club. It's been run by me. So it's not actually anything to do with the club like an official capacity. So I don't know why you'd want anybody there except to see what's going on. Um, and they just wanted to know the nature of it. And I said it was kind of an unofficial fans forum for the for the section of fans that don't feel like the answers were answered by the CEO and actually a protest group. It, I, I understand where you're coming from, Russ. It is, you know, but... Like I've said before, how many times have potential owners from other clubs revealed themselves fully until they come in? Did Paul Conway and Chian Lee reveal who they were before they came in? You know, very rarely do people come out and say, I want to buy this football club until they actually buy it, or until it's like two, three days, they've been linked, boom, they're in. Very rarely happens that people come out and say that. You know, I, th I understand the apprehension. And I suppose if you're not in the know, it's like kind of... But but again, I reiterate, I, I can't go into details because I've signed a legal documentation form that restricts me from providing the full details. But what I can assure you is, again, that I wouldn't be here talking to you right now if I felt that they were taking the piss. I wouldn't even be involved. I'd have removed myself from the Facebook group. I wouldn't be wasting my personal time on Tuesday night, sacrificing a night off paid work to do the meeting if I didn't feel that it was worth it, worthwhile. You know, and I appreciate everyone. You know, everyone's concern, and I understand that. And there's only so many questions that I can answer. And I wish those people could come out and say those things to you. And and I hope in due course they will do. Of course, I hope they did. Um. Right, I'm gonna three more minutes, guys, and I'm gonna get off because I've been on nearly for two hours, and I've got work. <laughs> Ethan, Benson is a good player for the future, should have got loan out to League One rather than me. Yeah, I agree with that. But Burnley are going to take the money, aren't they? And Benson as a player is going to see that, well, you know, I'm only going down one level really because he still will have felt that he were a champ player getting released from Burnley. A lot of these young lads still think that they're good enough, even though they might be better going lower and then coming back up. But he's not ready yet. And like I said, I think he would have been a lot better, um, you know, with an older lad with him. But that's not going to happen. The just general is the issue is generally speaking too many people in the current climate either don't want to, don't or won't defend their opinions in person, or you get people that immediately eventually start to threaten violence in person when you challenge them or even just ask questions. Yeah, and so then they'll then retract then and then say it all over on social media. But I'm old school, me. If I got some, if I got something to say, I'll say it either on private message, or you know just and call them out on it. Or just not talk to him again, you know. I I won't then carry on and be two faced about it. But that's everyone's priority to do that, into or you know whether to do that or not. Ishmael, I hope he gets sacked and he comes back. I still think this team is built for him. Big forwards, plenty of centre backs. Well, I hope we sell the Larry or get rid of him before he comes back. But listen, I think he'd come back. Would he make a difference? I think so. I think again having an identity again. But as uh, maybe Reno says further down, they won't get him back, Craig, because he's got an opinion. Um, and Iranian first division. Um, I went to the Q and A that Khalid did in November. I called him out on not having the squad to try to compete like they want us to, and he disagreed. I think they go on number of games played, but I don't agree with that. Um, 
I don't agree with that. Um, I think um, it's got to be the level that you've played at and also genuine experience, I think, with age comes maturity um, in different situations. Um, so I think some players flourish by not playing in the, the ground running, but more than less, you know, more than not, you do need players that's been there and done it. So I think their interpretation or experience is different to what a lot of fans are, their interpretations. I wish more people could just have honest discussions in person, even if they're a little heated, like the current discussions around our football club. I agree with you, mate. Um, well, it's not going to be really a and a Terry. It's going to be a presentation about how we've got to this state and um, the alternative. And facts are going to be put out there. That's what originally it was based for, as an unofficial fans forum. Um, and a presentation of how we got to this, because some people really want to see the figures broken down and really kind of get our case together. Um, but listen, I've, I've already, how many, I don't know how many times I can say it on social media and I'll say that again there and then. You know, I'm not going to keep repeating myself over and over again. I've said what I've said. I've, I've put an official statement out on Facebook. There's not much more I can do. You know, I, I'm, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, Gabriel, why have we signed him? You know, the fact that he weren't even you would buy his team in Belgium and the fact that he's come as a free agent says it all. You know, we should have just gone for a League One signing, especially with the wages he's been on. Complete waste of time. Um, yeah, it's more likely to be filmed, mate, whether that's a live stream or, or a pre-recorded and then add that on. Um, wouldn't put it past these clowns, Gabriel. Um, why didn't we get Bannon? One point five million. Well, because they don't want. Because they'll they they'll, they'll, they'd rather spend one point five million on four players and three of them not be good enough and one of them we we loan out. Um, to fucking I don't know. I hope he comes in, mate. You know he's more than welcome to come in, but I'm not going to hold back because he's there. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not. I won't say nothing personal about his appearance or anything like that. I'll only be saying facts that's actually being quoted by himself or through official financial records, and you know the things that's taken place that's actual real life evidence. So I won't say anything to him. But you know, I've got no time for him. You know, that's the only thing I'll say for that. So I'll, I'll be speaking about him, but I won't be saying anything to him. But he can't. He can't put legal things on on me for that. Um, eight grand a week. That's right, Gabriel. Um, he were on. He's on that. Will the meeting be recorded? Like I said, Sam, it's hopefully going to be recorded or live streamed. Um, Barnsley all my life, like the rest of my family do too. Yeah, totally agree. They only want yes men and won't spend any money. Right then, guys. I think I've answered everything. <laughs> Some people I won't have, but there we go. Can't please everyone after an hour and 52 minutes. Um, if you watch this back, thank you for watching. Um, please do keep the comments respectful. Um, I have nearly taken two hours out of my time to do a QA and a with you. And do with the content for the channel. I appreciate all Neil's work as well whilst I've not been here. Um, and also everyone that came on, do tune into the video from uh, Samantha and Joel from yesterday that did with Neil after the Bournemouth game. We will be doing previews for Cardiff. Um, and yeah, thank you for that. Hopefully we can get some plays in by tomorrow at 11 o'clock for the sake of the club to give us something to look forward to, but I very much uh, doubt it um, that we'll get more than one or two at the most, maybe a, a 10.59 signing just to try to put a positive spin of illusion to the fans of PR, as usual is on financial transfer deadline day. Um, but anyway, guys, speak to you all later. Hope you have a lovely rest of your evening. Do take care, and I'll see you later. You Reds. <laughs>